Hello guys and welcome back to another skill point guide video for Total War Warhammer 3 on Immortal Empires. Today we'll be go going over Festus the Le Leech Lord. Festus is really one of my favorite legendary lords currently in the game. He's a really powerful spellcaster on top of a... A little bit of a melee combatant with his Harbinger of Pestilence ability and healing elixirs. Granted, he doesn't have a melee line, but with those abilities, it still makes him a very, very um, useful, anyway, uh, legendary lord, or lord in general, uh, with those two abilities there. Now, jumping into his skill guide, I do like to go down his blue line a little bit just to get the Devoted of Chaos. That way you're getting more souls gained from battles by 15% and you're also going to be fighting a lot of forces of order with the Empire. You have Kislev to the north, you have Bretonia, you know, as you expand and you go west, you'll be fighting them. So you're just going to be getting more um, experience for his army um, in those cases. But after that, I do like to go down his magic line first. Um, just because, again, he's a really good spellcaster due to um, his healing abilities for for his uh, for his army specifically. So I do like to grab Stream of Corruption, Children of Nurgle, and Curse of the Leper. Rancid Visitations is just not a good spell. Um, it only lasts for 10 seconds. It's extremely expensive. Now, it does allegedly do a decent amount of damage per second, and I haven't tested it in a while, but... From, from my memory and if it is serving me correctly, it is not worth the cost. So I, I just kind of avoid it uh, for the time being when leveling him up. It's it's just not a priority for me. Uh, but I do like to grab Fleshy Abundance, Blight Boil, Magical Reserves, and Arcane Conduit. And it kind of leads us into his skill point or his special skill line anyway. Now, as I'm going through it, I do like to grab Fleshy Abundance and Blight Boil. Magical Reserves and the Arcane Conduit can kind of come later on. Uh, but his special skill line is really good. Uh, the Sage of Contagion, just getting more souls. And it's more about unlocking the rest of his special skill line. The Doctor's Orders is really powerful, especially for single entity units uh, that he can field. Uh, because it increases your battle healing cap for the entire lord, you know, for his entire army, and also reduces your winds of magic cost for fleshy abundance, which just makes it obviously cheaper. And so you can be casting it more often, so you can heal more units, and uh, in, in in your battles there. Now, uh, an apple a day is really good. It gives him more hit points, gives him the passive ability slime trail, which is just a, a small debuff with a very small effect range, but nonetheless, it's it is a little bit of a debuff. And really, the hit points is just going to be more powerful for him, so he can, you know, just withstand damage a little more, so he can, you know, be doing the har Harbinger of Pestilence ability longer, or doing the Healing Elixirs, because I end up usually doing some Chaos Warriors in his army. The Chaos Warriors of Nurgle are extremely tanky, very powerful. It's a really good combination to have them kind of hold the line while he's doing passive damage, while you have trolls or cavalry flanking or, or that kind of stuff there. So really very, very powerful um, kind of combo, and it, it works really well for his army. Um, I do like to grab Clinical Hygiene. The chance of plague spreading is, is nice, but it's really about the immune to contact effects for his army. That way, you know, they're not... Um, you know, slow down if it's like poison or, or things like that. It's a really good ability. I I really like the fact that he has that. Similar to uh, Helming Gorst, it's it's very 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 useful in certain situations. Um, now after that, I, I like to kind of finish finish up his magic line there a little bit with Miasma of Pestilence. It's a good debuff spell. Um, the melee attack minus twenty four. It it helps you know a little bit, and you can also overcast it to affect all units in an area, so it, it's not too bad upgraded there as well. Um, I do like to grab him or of, a, or of Chaos and also the Hearts of Iron because you're going to be doing a lot of melee fighting with the Warriors of Chaos so making sure that they fight better for longer is never a bad thing and as you can see we still have loads of skill points to spend so this is where I actually come into the red line for Festus. Uh, typically I do the Chaos Vanguard just because I'm going to be doing a lot of non-demonic infantry units that way they're getting more melee attack primarily but a little, little extra armor as well. Um, just because, like, he, like the Warriors of Chaos, like you can get demon units, but that's not what they specialize in. They're going to be doing the Chaos Warrior units, Marauders, Chosen, you know, that kind of thing. So, which is really why I like the Chaos Vanguard, other than you know the Savage Bloodlust plus the Charge Bonus plus twelve and Armor plus twelve for Demonic Infantry. For Nurgle is absolute garbage. 
They have next to no armor to begin with. They are very slow. Their charge bonus is very minimal. So giving them a little bit of a buff there is just not going to be that impactful. Now the rest of his red line, it kind of depends what you want to get. Whether you want to do uh, monster units, you know, paired with him. You want to do cavalry. Do you want to do some artillery with some uh, soul grinders? It's kind of up to you. Personally, I like to do his cavalry over his monsters. Uh, just because like a lot of the times you're not going to be in regions getting dragon ogres Which are the ones I would prefer to get chaos spawn aren't the worst thing in the world as, You know especially since they are unbreakable But a lot of the times you're going to be getting like trolls or warhounds primarily And those are just not really worth buffing that much Which is why I like the cavalry better because they're tankier They do a good amount of damage you can give them extra melee defense extra charge bonus So I just really prefer the chaos knights over the um, over the monsters for Festus's army and just finishing his red line I do like to grab the Legion of Doom more armor melee defense and spell resistance for your infantry and grabbing standard die uh, It's just gonna be a really good way for him again because he's kind of kind of be in the front line uh, So he can use his aura of effect abilities, but not really be in melee because his stats are not that great and you don't want him to really be in melee ever. You just want him to be close enough to the enemy where he's doing his passive abilities, where it's healing or the um, the Morse engine effect. And then just because of the standard die, it'll just make those units around him fight better and keep them from breaking. So he's not going to be in melee as often in those fights. So, and we still have 16 points to spend. I do like to grab Mentor. You know why not really you got the points to spend it um, I do like to grab the gardener of Nurgle and the bedside or bedside manor it's, it's not that impactful per se but the actual extra casualty replenishment rate is nice and making uh, him demonic isn't a bad thing because necessarily you just have to be careful that you know his leadership isn't the highest to begin with so you just got to keep tabs on that but at least he'll be able to fight longer because he is demonic and he's not going to route and run away. But really it's the, the speed minus 15%. That way your troops can basically offset their lack of speed and also let your cavalry units kind of run enemy units down once uh, army losses are inflicted. And then the remaining points going down the rest of his blue line and wrapping it up. It doesn't really matter which other one you want. Like the spoilers, server die, ruination, they're not really that impactful regardless. Um, so I really like if anything I would do recruitment because I'm not gonna Basically siege out an enemy and I'm not gonna raid. I hate raiding in Warhammer 3. It's just not useful And then going down the rest of his blue line grabbing unholy resilience great for him some extra casualty or replenishment rate in case he does take a good amount of damage in some fights and then going down I do like to grab the uh, blessed by evil that way we get more income from post battle loot and also a higher chance of stealing a magic item and really it it's not too much of a difference or a big deal what you want ambush defense chance isn't really that important for melee focused armies because you're in melee like you're not in miss you know you don't have any missile units you don't need to set up you don't need time to set up you know with a melee army you're just looking to fight right away so I really like to uh, just don't really have to worry about that so you actually just kind of end up grabbing lightning strike just to you know delay the enemy a little bit gives your army time to catch up to the enemy formation because the AI as you guys probably know in Warhammer 3 likes to sit and wait for the reinforcements so if it's a situation where you're trying to rush and knock out a smaller enemy before the bigger army arrives it's a really good idea just to delay them as, as much as possible and grabbing the disease barrier is good more campaign movement range souls from battles income from post battle loot why not uh, it's just good uh, good abilities to, to grab there. The last four points, I mean, pick and choose, you know, pick your poison, basically. Uh, you can, I, I usually like to go with Lightning Strike just to increase that battle reinforcement time a little further. And then grabbing the Fatigue uh, Galley Pot just for some extra casualty replenishment rate. Uh, you could go down a little more of the red line if you want to, but... You know, once once you kind of have an army, I, I usually stick with it, which is why I don't do a lot of points into the red line. I kind of pick what I want to go with for the majority of the campaign and just roll with, with what I've picked there. And again, this, the spoiler with raiding and the ruination is just not that big of a deal. Uh, I just don't really enjoy it. And again, Rancid vis Visitations 
it's just not worth it in, the, in my opinion. The Curse of the Leper, I'm not a big fan of the damage reflection. It's If it was like an area of effect versus one unit, I'd be more, I guess, um, willing to use it more often. But since it's only one unit, it just doesn't really have that big of an impact there. Uh, but that is his skill guide for uh, the skill guide for Festus. Excuse me. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. How you go about leveling him up? You know, let me know any differences or what you guys just think in general of how I chose or choose to level him up. Again, always interested to hear how you guys go about um, leveling up your lords. But don't forget to hit that like button. And until the next video or live stream, I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you later. Bye.